Hey friends, it's Laura. Welcome back. I hope you are having a wonderful day. In today's planty video, I'm going to be showing you some plant updates in my collection. There has been some very exciting growth happening, so I'm going to be showing you that. There has also been some unfortunate updates that have happened. I did have thrips come through, many thrips. No plants died, but there was definitely some damage done. So I'm going to show you that because that is real. That is a real part of this hobby, battling the pests. I'm just going to go through and show you what is happening in my collection. If you are into that, stay tuned. So I'm actually going to start with the Philodendron Gloriosum, which was behind me during the intro. There is a new leaf, but the new leaf does have thrips damage. So I'm going to show you up close. Okay, so this is the new leaf and it is beautiful it, it is you know the shape is beautiful there's no browning tips and all that but you will notice there are some interesting patterns along the center and even on the edges of this leaf um, when this leaf came out it was all rolled up as usual and as soon as it unfurled I saw multiple thrips just living their best life in there it was like I don't know, an all-you-can-eat resort. I had no idea they were in there. The rest of the plants had absolutely no thrips damage at all. They must have just like parachuted in. I don't, I don't understand. Um, but they were living a, a good life in there until I washed them off. And I think all of those patterns are just from them, I'm, I'm assuming. <laughs> this leaf hasn't completely hardened off. You can see it is a lighter color than the more mature leaves. So it's possible that some of those <laughs> patterns will disappear or at least lighten or become less obvious. If they don't, I mean, such is life. The leaf is still healthy and there are no thrips on it that I see i'm like i'm looking at the back as i'm talking i don't see any thrips i think it has been thoroughly washed and i don't think they are on this plant anymore which is why it is back in my collection um so that's like a good and bad update is this leaf overall the leaf is beautiful and i mean the little patterns do add interest but I would rather the thrips not be living La Vida Loca on my Gloriosum leaves. Do you hear that thrips? I don't see any new growth points at the moment, but I'm hoping that pretty soon there will be a new leaf coming out, um, at least before the end of this summer, I'm, I'm really hoping. Oh, and this little alien, um, I'm hoping will scare any future thrips away from visiting. The next update is not one of these bittersweet updates. It is completely positive update and it is to do with the begonia silver dollar, which is right down there. I better pull it out. I did talk about this update in a begonia video that I filmed, I don't know, a couple weeks ago. Um, but at that time, it had not completely come to pass. Okay, this is really sketchy, just let me focus. The begonia silver dollar is blooming. <laughs> now, isn't that flower the most adorable flower you've ever seen? It looks like the types of flowers that people draw when they don't really know how to draw flowers. <laughs> it's so cute, the little yellow center. And there is another bud right there, which means there's gonna be another one. <laughs> Um, I talked extensively about this plant in that begonia video, so I, I won't talk extensively. I did recently cut off, there was a really big leaf here um, that was kind of curling because it was so big. You can see this one is kind of curling because it's getting so big. Um, this one was massive and it was curling and it was kind of, I felt like it was probably getting in the way of the smaller leaf, so I did snip it off. It was healthy, but Pruning, pruning is a part of a part of plant life. So I did prune that off, but otherwise, um, this plant is doing really well in its humidity dome. And this is just, I feel like when plants bloom, you just, you feel like it's living its best life. It's going through its life cycles. I was sniffing it the other day. I don't detect a smell and I have a pretty good sense of smell, um, but still. 
but that doesn't matter. It, it is beautiful. It is like the most perfect flower in the world. And we are so happy for Begonia Silver Dollar around here. I have been showing it to my family basically every day and they are just, they are over the moon. Now right beside that Begonia Silver Dollar, well maybe not right beside, but on the same shelf is a, another update that I, I need to talk about. I have talked extensively about this plant pot on Instagram, but I don't think I've shown it on YouTube. Anyway, uh, this is a plant pot that I made. It's a ceramic alien, if that's what it is. And I am so proud of the plant combination that I finally settled on. So this is my Haworthia coopery, I believe. It looks different from my other Haworthia coopery, but I, that is my closest identification that I can come up with. This is a really, really cool plant. The tips of the leaves are translucent, so they glow in the light, and obviously it also looks like a really cool hairdo on this alien. Frosted tips, some kind of really cool alien hairdo. So this is an update, not so much on the growth side, although I have noticed that it did put out some new leaves kind of here, I think, or maybe just expand it. It was in a significantly smaller pot prior to being put in this pot, so maybe it is kind of just expanding. But the main update is that I have put this plant in this pot and it makes me very happy. And moving along to the left is my pink princess. And I never talk about my pink princess on here and that is because normally she's just putting out those burgundy leaves like a little bit of pink once in a while but lately she has been putting out quite a bit of pink so this is a fairly recent leaf this is a fairly recent leaf and this one has just come out of the sheath and by come out of the sheath i mean i pulled it out of the sheath i'm really tempted to just see what the variegation is on that leaf but i don't want to break it i have done that in the past but exciting that she has some pink going on i have considered you know pruning some of these darker leaves to promote more pink but for now she's putting out the pink and i'm just gonna let her keep doing that i i wish this leaf was open kind of just want to look but it's really tightly furled so i'm not going to do that i might mist it today just to help it not stick together but that is pretty exciting so it kind of goes to show with these pink princesses if you are patient make sure they have enough light they will hopefully put out pink i know some of them revert completely but i kind of had thought that was going on and then start to see some pink so happy and if we keep on moving in this direction i guess we're just showing so many plants today but my philodendron painted lady put out this leaf and i'm obsessed she is kind of on a bamboo stake now because i wanted to make sure she had everything she needed it's not really supporting her much my thought is this will keep growing and then she'll be well supported but this new leaf is so perfect and stunning and i feel like this is a quintessential painted lady leaf like it looks like it is painted it has a slight pinky orange margin and is just looking really beautiful this plant is doing really really well um i did chop her multiple times and gifted and sold some cuttings but she has recovered so beautifully i think for now i'm just gonna let her grow <laughs> not planning to chop her um for now especially now that she's giving me leaves like this so stunning and right beside painted lady is my melanocrysum this isn't really an update but these leaves like is that thrips damage because i don't see any thrips at all um but just the leaves are kind of funky and i this leaf is perfect so I was thinking maybe just cutting to here and let it grow in fresh. Like, I don't know what is going on, but it's also possible that this was damage that just kind of happened as the leaf was unfurling because I was not misting these leaves. This plant was sort of behind some other plants, so I wasn't really paying a lot of attention. It's growing really well. 
And there's some cuttings that I have propagated put in. Oh, look out for that guy. I have propagated some cuttings in here. Like this is a cutting and then there's a cutting here. Um, so it is doing really well. I just, you know, these leaves are not the perfect leaves that this leaf, for example, is, or even this leaf um, are really beautiful. And then we have these leaves that I think, like, I think that's just damage from the unfurling. But this looks almost like the patterns on the Gloriosum, but there's no thrips. And I've definitely sprayed it just in case I'm missing them, but I don't, is that thrips poo? No, no, it's not. So I, I don't know if you know what it is or if you have a melanocrysum and this is totally normal, um, please let me know because I'm not, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. I could just let it keep growing and not worry about it. I just want it to be healthy because it's such a stunning plant. There is a new leaf on its way. So maybe I'll wait and see how that leaf is before I chop anything. Over in the other corner of the plant room, I have a few other updates. So my philodendron dark lord is right here. Um, I have chopped this poor guy so many times. I, I don't know, I'm terrible. But there is a new leaf here and this just recently came out of the sheath. I'm gonna be really gentle. There is some type of damage on the leaf there. And I don't know, it almost looks like it was too dry or something, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna just let it come in. I also, like the Painted Lady, I have to stop chopping this guy. I have to just let him grow and be his true self um, for a little while <laughs> before I chop him again. But I am excited that there's a new leaf coming in and it looks like that little bump is gonna be another leaf as well. So even if there is a bit of damage on this, um, I think it'll be okay. Whoa, something's fallen down from Peperomia Hope, I think. This plant is doing really well, but I do find it just will randomly throw a leaf on the ground. Like I find lots of leaves on the, yeah, you can see there's some on the ground there. They just kind of cry leaves once in a while. Um, I'm always talking about this plant, I feel like, but there is a new leaf on my philodendron. Varshavecii aurea, and what the heck is that? Oh, it's not. There's also a whole bunch of little, little leaves coming in too. So this plant is doing well. I feel like I've given a lot of updates on this plant because I'm obsessed, but overall doing great. And down here, Philodendron Prince of Orange. Look at that, it's like glowing. This is the perfect perfect view of philodendron prince of orange so beautiful and i've said this before um the other leaves like once they harden off i don't find them that oh there's some dog hair on there i don't find them like that stunning like if the whole plant just looked like this i would not be that into it but then it puts out these orange leaves so this one i mean it's almost open you can see how beautiful it is in there let's check for thrips Make sure there's no all-you-can-eat resort for thrips in there. Looks pretty good. And then, of course, this leaf as well is going to open. So there's going to be two that are going to be open at the same time and bright orange. That is something to be very excited about. Below the Prince of Orange is my Philodendron Moonlight. And I have struggled with this plant since I got it. I don't know if it has some type of virus or something that I just don't know about. Um, but this leaf just came out. And it's smaller than anticipated, but maybe it will get bigger. And then there's like this translucent part. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> I've been fertilizing this plant, so I don't think it's a lack of nutrients. I have no idea. There is another leaf on the way, so maybe that will also give me some clues as to what's going on. Um, but yeah, ever since I got this plant, I got it kind of like as a four inch little tiny plant. It has just not thrived. And lots of people say philodendron moonlight are just easy. They just grow. They're kind of like the philodendron birkin, like you just let them go. But I don't know, mine struggles and I have never seen thrips on it. And even on the new leaves, which again is where they usually are, there's nothing. So this leaf is beautiful. It's tiny, but I think it's a good sign. And maybe this plant is on its way to thriving. Like maybe it has a turned a page and now is going to just grow amazingly well for me. Who knows? getting pretty good light there so 
And actually, since I just mentioned philodendron birkin, I should share an update about my philodendron birkin. Let me just pull this out so we can see the full extent. This birkin used to sit on one of the shelves behind me before I rearranged things. And this area was facing out and the back of the pot was very unexciting. And then at one point I pulled it out and I noticed there was like this full on extra plant growing and it was all totally green leaves, which is fine. Um, and then <laughs> since moving it over there, it's getting more light like in the back part as well as getting light on the front and the back. And now this part, this little all green section of the plant has just really exploded. And as you can see, there's tons of irrigation. There's a new leaf right here that's about to pop out and you can see it has tons of irrigation. So that's really cool. I find <laughs> Birkins just do their thing. I mean, even if I wanted this plant to revert, I think it would be pretty hard because as soon as it got a little bit more light, it was like, okay, back to variegation. Birkins, I feel, are just one of the better philodendrons if you just want a philodendron that does what it's supposed to do, grows quickly, has the variegation that it's supposed to have, and is just happy. I forget to water this plant all the time and it's it's doing well. So I wasn't actually planning to share these updates, but this is an update. <laughs> This whole extra plant is an update on the Birkin um, and it's it's pretty cool. I anticipate having this pot kind of overflowing at some point if it doesn't get thrips, of course. I've never actually seen thrips on the Birkin though, which again is weird because this has definitely been beside other plants that did have thrips and this just kept the thrips away for some reason. So beautiful philodendron Birkin, great update. Another update over here, can you see it? My lipstick plant is blooming. I don't know why it only has one bloom, but I am trying to just be grateful that it has one bloom. It's very adorable. I mean, they call this a lipstick plant because I guess this kind of looks like lipstick, but kind of looks like a face or like a big mouth that's open too, if these were like the top teeth or something. I don't know why there's only one. Why is there only one bloom? I have been fertilizing this plant, making sure it gets lots of sun because I have of course wanted it to bloom this summer. Maybe there are more buds on their way and this is just like the early one. We will see. I don't see any other buds at all, at all, <laughs> but you never know. And if this is the only one for the summer, um, here it is, let's celebrate. It's still really, really exciting. I don't really detect a smell on this flower at all either, but it's really, really beautiful. And it's very eye-catching where it is. It's kind of just like bloom. So I've been enjoying that a lot. This plant has bloomed in the past and I don't really remember how long the bloom stayed around. I feel like it was a couple weeks. I hope that this one sticks around for a while as well. I'm bringing you over to the pink corner. Um, my Rojo Congo just recently put this leaf out. It has recently hardened off and turned from like reddish burgundy pink to dark green. And there is already another leaf on its way. So this plant is super, super happy where it is. It's quite close to a window. It's kind of all alone in this little corner here, but it is happy and doing really, really well. I kind of forget about this plant as well because it's in such a big pot. I don't need to water it super often and it's just always putting out a new leaf. I don't really see pests ever on this plant even though the leaves are so big. Um, but yeah, that's exciting. I wish I would have caught this leaf when it was still in its reddish burgundy time, but too bad, I missed it. All right, I'm now in the isolation room because I said I would share some of the sad updates. Actually, this is this is not a sad update. So my Syngonium Albo is in here because it always has thrips and it did have thrips. I chopped it all down and this most of this is brand new growth, um, thrips free. I just spray this like once a week because I need to get a handle on the, I feel like this is always the source of thrips is Syngonium Albo in my collection. So she just lives in here. She's getting lots of light. She's fine in here, um, but she's constantly on thrips watch. So yeah. Now right beside, oh, can't even tell what plant this is. 
It's my philodendron varicosum. <laughs> so sad. Um, this was not a huge plant, but it did have a beautiful leaf and it did have a lot of growth points that were almost, not growth points, like uh, leaves that were not yet fully ready to unfurl. And I looked at this and it was crawling with ribs. <laughs> Um, so I right away cut off the leaf because the leaf was totally like it was just thrips paradise. So I cut off the leaf and then I sprayed everything down. Some of the little buds of leaves also had thrips on them. So I cut those off and then I sprayed it down with my foliar spray and my pest prevention spray. Like this plant has been fully sprayed. Let me just pull that off and it's in isolation with the other bad plants, but I think it will be okay. There, we've got these two plants. There's also like a rooted cutting in there, which I don't know if it will make it, but we will see. I really hope that this varicosum does well. I, I didn't, it was one of those plants that I never really considered getting until I saw it at Plant Gather in Kelowna. And then I just really wanted a varicosum. And you can see even the petiole, like the fuzzy petioles are all gone. We just have like this stem. Anyway, I hope that it recovers. I, I have high hopes. It was such a healthy plant when I caught it too. I don't know. It was near the Syngonium elbow for a little bit. Anyway, now they're back together fighting the thrips. Uh, behind here, actually, this is not a sad plant. This is my beautiful succulent planter and I just actually put this in here this morning. We have really, really bad wildfire smoke and this planter was outside and I did notice some ash and things like that accumulating on the leaves. I gave it a good wash and it's in here. It's not touching any of these plants. I don't, I don't normally have any pests on my um, succulents. So I'm not really worried about this. Normally this lives at work with me in my classroom but in the summer I bring it home and put it on my deck, but I don't want it to get covered with ash. That did happen a couple years ago and it, it was gross. So I brought it in just to protect it. It does not have any pests. It's just living in here. And in the back here, oh my goodness. I'm really sad about this too. This was my Monstera Peru. I, I cannot, Monstera Peru, I don't know. I love Monstera Peru, but it does not love me. All of a sudden, most of the leaves went yellow and fell off. And then there was one single leaf just hanging on and it fell off as well. And it might've been overwatering, but I also, like I looked for thrips, I didn't see any, but the leaves were not looking good. So I, I suspect thrips but also could have been overwatering, also could have been over fertilizing. My Monstera deliciosa also has passed away from thrips. That was a death from thrips, but that was a few months ago. And so I just wonder if maybe Monsteras in general attract more thrips. Do you find that? Um, so I was, I wanted a Peru for a long time and then it was doing really well. And now here we are. Um, so these two are the sad updates, but they are still alive. And so I'm, I'm gonna hang on to hope. Syngonium Albo shows, like this, Syngonium Albo looked basically like this, maybe three months ago. And now it's a really healthy, beautiful plant that probably I could put back in the plant room, but I'm just, I'm gonna just wait for a little while. All right, those are all of the plant updates for today, the good and the bad. Hopefully you enjoyed hanging out. I also wanted to plug, and I feel awkward plugging anything, but I want to plug my plant care course. I've been getting lots of questions. I do have a beginner houseplant course on Skillshare. So this is about a one hour course. I talk about watering, lighting, pest, prevention, as you can see, no one is perfect at pest prevention, um, propagation. I go over all of the basics in this course and it is on Skillshare. The link I'm going to include below is actually a free trial of Skillshare. So you could in theory do the plant care course and then decide if you actually want to continue your Skillshare subscription. I know a lot of people have done that. That is totally fine. I am happy that people are learning about plants. I would say this plant course is 
destined more for beginners or maybe intermediate beginners, depending on where you're at with your knowledge of plants. And it was really, really fun to make that course. I am a teacher in real life. So it was fun to teach about plants in a course. It was, it was really fun to make and it is so fun to hear from people who have done the course and have learned something. So if you're interested, the link is below. I would love to have you as a student. Other than that, friends, I hope you have a wonderful day, a wonderful week. I hope you are doing great and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye.